All right, this video is going to look at our different types of asymptotes. Uh, we're going to go back over our vertical asymptote that we talked about, and then we're going to look at horizontal and slant asymptotes. So quickly to review here, the vertical asymptote is we simply set the denominator equal to zero, and we can solve for x. Now, there's only one situation we have to be concerned with, and that is if a factor in the denominator cancels a factor in the numerator, there will not be a vertical asymptote. That means there will simply be a hole in the graph at that point, okay? Now, for the horizontal, the horizontal asymptotes are going to be relatively easy to calculate. If we look here, f of x equals ax to the n over bx to the m, this is just indicating our rational expression here. Uh, we have a polynomial on top and a polynomial on the bottom. Now, if we look at a here, a is just representing the coefficient of our x to the n. Now, keep in mind, the n here is representing the largest exponent in the numerator, and m is representing the largest exponent in the denominator. So you want to make sure you have your polynomial in descending order, which means your largest exponent is first, and then they go down from largest to smallest. And the same thing for the denominator. So for the horizontal asymptote, all we're going to do is compare the exponents. And it says here that if n is less than m, which means that the exponent in the numerator is smaller than the exponent in the denominator, your asymptote is y equals 0 are simply the x-axis. Okay. Now, if n equals m, if they're the same, then your asymptote is simply going to be the ratio of a divided by b. So in that case here, it would be y equals a over b. And the last one says if n is greater than m, okay, that means the exponent on top is larger than the exponent on the bottom, there is no horizontal asymptote. Now for the slant asymptote down here, the exponent in the numerator, if that is one greater, okay, it can only be one greater than the exponent and the denominator, which mathematically means n is equal to m plus 1. So what that really states that is if you have x to the fifth in the numerator, and then if you have a x to the fourth in the denominator, that is 1 greater. So 4 plus 1 would give you the 5. So if it's only greater by 1, you would have a slant asymptote. All right, so now we're going to look at several examples going through each one of these. So the first example we have is f of x equals x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. Now, I always like to start by first factoring our function if we can. So here we can factor the denominator. We have a difference of squares. So that I factor to x minus 2 and x plus 2. Now, at this point, I want to identify the domain of our function. Okay, and remember the domain, we're simply going to take the denominator and set that equal to zero. So that means we're going to have x minus 2, and we can set the x minus 2 equal to zero, and x plus 2 equal to zero. So that means x equals 2, x equals negative 2. So therefore, the domain would be all real numbers, except for that x cannot equal a plus or minus 2. So all real numbers except for 2 and negative 2. All right, next we want to identify any holes that we may have in the graph, okay? Now, if we look where we factored, the x minus 2 factor actually cancels out, and that's what's going to cause a hole in the graph. So that means that x minus 2 equals 0, which gives us x equals 2, is going to be a hole in the graph. Now, over here, we already said that x equals 2 is not part of the domain, but the x equals 2 is going to give us a hole in the graph. And then if we identify a vertical asymptote, then that's going to be the other factor here that did not cancel. So if we take x plus 2, set that equal to 0, x equals negative 2 is going to be a vertical asymptote. So that's where this negative 2 over here, that's also not part of the domain. So notice positive 2 is a hole in the graph. Negative 2 is going to be a vertical asymptote. All right, now, we also said we want to look at, do we have any horizontal asymptotes? Well, 
again, we're going to compare the exponents. Well, we have x to the first, so we have a 1 in the numerator and a 2 in the denominator. So the denominator is larger. Well, let's go up here and find out what happens. If n is less than m, okay, which means that the denominator is larger, then y equals 0 is going to be our horizontal asymptote. Well, if y equals 0, that means we're looking at the y-axis. So in this case, it would be simply y equals 0, or we could say that's going to be the x-axis. And then we want to look at, do we have a slant asymptote? Well, I'll tell you now, the only way that we're going to have a slant asymptote is if we do not have a horizontal. We cannot have both. And that's because the slant asymptote is going to occur when the exponent in the numerator is 1 greater. And up here, we already stated that if the exponent in the numerator is greater, there is no horizontal. So in this case, we will not have a slant. All right, so what do we have left to calculate? Well, let's see. We want to calculate also the zeros. So we want to find out where does the graph cross the x-axis. Well, that's only going to occur when this function is equal to 0. And to do that, the only way that this function is going to go to 0 is if the numerator goes to 0. So all we have to do is actually take the x minus 2 and set that equal to 0. And if we solve for x, we get a positive 2. Now, this is where you got to be really careful. Once you find that value, let's look at our domain. Well, remember, our domain is all real numbers except for 2 and negative 2. So 2 is not part of the domain. So that means here, this is not a 0 because 2 is not in the domain. Okay. So now let's look at the graph of this function that we have and see if that corresponds to what we calculated. So if we go to the calculator, go to y equals. Now we're going to type parentheses x minus 2, close the parentheses, divided by, again, parentheses on the bottom. We have x squared minus 4, close the parentheses. And again, I like to go to zoom standard. And here we have our graph. And I'm going to copy and paste this into our notes so we can compare what we calculated. So does this match up with what we came up with? So let's see. We said that there's going to be a hole in the graph at x equals 2. Okay. Well, let's see. x equals 2, I'm going to say, is probably right about here. So that means here there should be a hole in the graph. Now, we can't see that with the calculator, and it's important that you notice that because if we go here to the calculator, and if I said second and trace, and we want to calculate 1, which is the value what happens when x equals 2? Notice there is no y value over here. So that means at x equals 2 here, there is a hole in the graph. Okay, so be careful. The calculator won't always or will not show you that. You'll have to be able to find that on your own. And then we obviously have a vertical asymptote here at a negative 2. If we look here at negative 2, we have our vertical asymptote. And then our horizontal asymptote does occur here at, whoops, the horizontal occurs at the x-axis where y equals 0 is our horizontal asymptote. And of course there is no slant and we said it does not have any zeros, so therefore the graph you can tell does not cross the x-axis. All right, our next example we have 2x squared plus 6x divided by 3x squared plus 3x minus 18. And once again, I want to start by factoring. And the numerator, we can simply take out a common factor. They, we could take out a 2 and we could take out an x. So if I factor out the 2x, we're left with x plus 3. And on the denominator, we have a trinomial. And before we factor this as a trinomial, I notice that we have a common factor of 3. So to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to factor out the 3. And we'd be left with x squared plus x minus 6. And then let's go back now and factor the trinomial. So take out that common factor. It gives us a little bit smaller numbers to work with. 
So now we can hopefully easily factor x squared plus 6x minus 6. So we'd have x times x is our x squared. And the only uh, thing we have for 6 would be 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. And I have a feeling it's going to be a positive 3 and let's see a negative 2. So now from here, let's go ahead and calculate our domain. And again, that's what's uh, going to make the denominator 0. So we're going to set each factor in the denominator equal to 0. And really, we could set the 3 equal to 0, but 3 is never going to equal to 0, so we don't have to worry about that factor. It's just a number. So then we would take x plus 3, set that equal to 0, and x minus 2. So we get x equals a negative 3 and x equals a positive 2. So therefore, the domain is all real numbers x does not equal negative 3, and x does not equal a positive 2. So everything except for negative 3 and positive 2. And next we want to look at, will we have any holes in the graph? Well, if we look where we factored, once again here, the factor that cancels, the x plus 3, that's going to give us a hole in the graph. So therefore, x equals negative 3 is going to be a whole. And the other factor that is left is going to give us our vertical asymptote. So that's x minus 2 equals 0. So simply x equals 2 would be the vertical asymptote. And now we want to look at will we have a horizontal asymptote? Well, we're going to compare our exponents. And this is where you want to probably go to the uh, polynomial where it's multiplied out and up here we have an x squared and an x squared so the exponents up here are the same well what do we have if the exponents are the same if the exponents are equal then it says that we're simply going to look at the ratio of a over b so here we have a over b the coefficient of our terms so for us, the coefficients then here would be 2 over 3. So we would have simply y equals 2 thirds would be the horizontal asymptote. And once again, because we have a horizontal, that means we will not have a slant. And then lastly, we want to look at finding our zeros. So what's going to make this function uh, 0? Well, once again, the only thing that's going to make this function 0 is if we set the numerator equal to 0. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take the part here that we've factored already, the 2x, x plus 3, and set that equal to 0. So 2x, x plus 3, if we set this equal to 0, then of course we're simply going to set each factor equal to 0. And we get x equals, if we divide by 2, x is equal to 0, and we have x equals negative 3. Now, before we say that those are the zeros, we need to see, are they within the domain? Well, our domain was all real numbers except for negative 3 and positive 2. So that means that here, x equals 0 is going to be a 0, but when we have negative 3, this is not a 0 because negative 3 is not in the domain. Okay, so be very careful. A lot of people say, well, oh, the answer is 0 and negative 3 are zeros, but we got to keep in mind here, negative 3 is not part of the domain. So therefore, it cannot be a 0. Now, once again, let's go to the calculator and look at the graph. So if we go to y equals, we'll clear out the previous graph. And again, we want to put parentheses. And we have 2x squared plus 6x close the parentheses, divided by open parentheses, 3x squared plus 3x minus 18, close the parentheses, and I'm going to go to zoom 6, zoom standard, and here comes our graph, and once again I'm going to copy this so that we can compare this to what we found. And let's see if the graph matches our findings. 
All right, so we said there's going to be a hole in the graph at x equals negative 3. So uh, if we look here, there should be a hole in the graph, of, let's say, at negative 3. And again, if we go to the calculator, we could go to second and trace. Number one is value. Type in negative 3. Hit enter. And notice over here, we do not have a y value. So that verifies there is a hole in the graph here. And it's obvious that at a positive 2, we do have a vertical asymptote here. And now the horizontal asymptote is at 2 thirds. So if we look right through here, we do have a horizontal asymptote. And that appears to be at 2 thirds. Okay. And then the slant, there is none. And for the zeros, uh, or the graph does cross through at x equals 0 right here at the origin. So it looks like we found everything correctly. So there's a hole at negative 3, vertical asymptote at 2, horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 thirds, and we have a 0 at x equals 0. All right, one more example. We have 2x squared minus 5x plus 5 divided by x minus 2. And once again, we want to start by factoring. And I'm going to go ahead and save a little bit of time. You're going to find out here this numerator really doesn't factor. So uh, I'm simply going to go then and calculate the domain. And that means we're going to take all the factors, which we have x minus 2, set that equal to 0. So 2 makes the denominator 0. So all real numbers except x does not equal positive 2. And now we want to look at, will we have any holes in the graph? Well, because the x minus 2 factor on the bottom doesn't cancel, then we will not have a hole in the graph. So therefore, that means that we're only going to have a vertical asymptote, and that's going to occur here for the x minus 2 equal to 0. So that's going to be x equals 2. And then if we want to identify, will we have a horizontal asymptote? Well, that means we're going to compare the exponents, right? So that means we're going to look at the exponent on the bottom, which is x to the first, and we have an x squared on the top. So the numerator is larger. And up here before, we said if the numerator is larger, there is no horizontal asymptote. Now, if there's no horizontal asymptote, then we need to check for a slant. Well, the slant is going to occur if the numerator is only greater by 1. Well, if we look here, the numerator is 2, x squared, and on the bottom it's x to the first, so it is greater by 1. Here, the 2, so let's see here, we do not have a horizontal. So if we look for our slant asymptote, we can see that here we have an exponent of 2, which is only one more than the exponent of 1. So therefore, the answer is yes, we will have a slant. And in order to find that, we have to use long division. Okay, so now we know why we had to know our long division. So that means we're going to take the x minus 2 and divide that into the numerator, which is 2x squared minus 5x plus 5. Okay. Now, remember, make sure you have this in descending order, x squared, x to the first, and no x. And if there's a missing term as you go from largest to smallest exponent, you need to put in a zero placeholder for that term. So now, what do we have to multiply x by to get x squared, or 2x squared? So we need a 2 and an x. So 2x times x gives us our 2x squared. 2x times negative 2 is a negative 4x. And this is the part you need to remember. Because we're subtracting, we change the signs here. So now we can add and they cancel out. 2x squared disappears. So negative 5x and a positive 4x would be a negative x or negative 1x. Then we're going to bring down the plus 5. What do we need to multiply the x by to get a negative x? And that's simply a negative 1. So we get a negative x. Negative 1 and negative 2 is a positive 2. And once again, we change the signs. And when we combine, the x's cancel. 
and we have 5 minus 2 is positive 3. All right, the 3 is our remainder, but we're going to ignore the remainder. So all that we're going to look at is the 2x minus 1 that we have up here, and that's going to give us our slant asymptote. So that would be y equals 2x minus 1 is going to give us our slant. And the only thing we have left now to calculate is do we have any zeros? Okay, so if we look at this again, the only way we're going to find our zeros is what's going to make the numerator zero. So I'm going to take the numerator and set that equal to zero. So that means we would take the 2x squared minus 5x plus 5. And what's going to make that whole numerator go to zero? Now, we already said that this isn't going to factor very nicely. So there's two ways we can do this. And one is we could use the quadratic formula which says negative b, so that's a negative, negative 5, so it's, our b is negative 5 here, and then it's plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's a negative 5 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 2, and then c, which is the positive 5, and this is all divided by 2 times a, which is 2. And I'm going to quickly simplify this. We'd have two negatives make it a positive 5. And then the square root underneath here becomes a negative 15 over 4. And the part we look at here is we have a negative under the square root. So that tells us that there is uh, not going to be a 0. So therefore, there are none. That means the graph never crosses the x-axis. Now, there's an alternate way that we can do this. If you don't want to go through the quadratic uh, formula to find our zeros, then we could simply look at this graphically. Now, we're looking at 2x squared minus 5x plus 5. So if we go to the calculator, clear out the other function, and uh, we're going to type in the 2x squared minus 5x plus 5. Now, I, I put parentheses here, but we don't need them for this, because remember, we're only looking at the numerator. We want to know what makes the numerator 0. So if I look at the graph, notice here we have a parabola that comes down and goes up, but it never crosses the x-axis. So if we copy this here, then that's kind of an alternate way that we can calculate our zeros, because we'll notice it never crosses the x-axis. So therefore, that verifies that there are no zeros. Now, let's go ahead and type in the entire function. So I've already typed in the first part, the 2x squared minus 5x plus 5. So if I go to the end here of the parentheses, then divided, and the denominator was x minus 2. And if I go to zoom standard, and of course, if we looked at the graph here, we could tell that here there are no zeros because it doesn't cross the x-axis. So if I copy this, let's see if this verifies our findings. All right, so if we scroll up here, we said there, whoops, there are no zeros. I'm sorry, there are no holes in the graph, okay? We said there's a vertical asymptote at two. Well, if we look here at two, we do have a vertical asymptote at x equals two, okay? We said there are no horizontal asymptotes, but we said we do have a slant at two x minus one. And if we look closely here, uh, it looks like our slant's going to go right through here. Okay. And let's see if we can verify that. Uh, let me erase this and we'll go back. Let's see if we can verify that with our calculator. So let me delete this out. And if we go to y equals, 
and I'm going to go down to y2. Now recall, we said we had a slant at 2x minus 1. y equals 2x minus 1. So I'm going to go to y2 here and type in 2x minus 1 and look at the graph. And notice the line goes right through here. So that verifies that we did have the right slant asymptote. So let me copy this over to give us a little bit better picture here of the graph. So now if we go back, we can identify this slant going right through here. So there's our slant. And we said we had the vertical asymptote here at x equals positive 2. There are no zeros. There's no hole in the graph. And there's no horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so now let's go back and quickly review. Uh, for vertical asymptotes here, we said you simply set the denominator equal to 0. And that's going to be a vertical asymptote as long as that factor doesn't cancel out with a factor in the numerator and then if you do you end up with a hole in the graph. For the horizontal you simply compare your exponents okay and then for the slant if the exponent in the numerator is only one greater then you're going to use long division to find the slant asymptote.